Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen and uh, this is as always the Rise of the Robot campaign. My name is Eigen. We're playing on Legendary Ironman difficulty and trying to beat the game with only robots and psionically active characters. It has been a while in real life since I touched the game the last time, probably about two-ish months, uh, so I'm not completely familiar with uh, where the campaign is currently standing but uh, that should not discourage us to continue i was keenly aware that we wanted to infiltrate this chosen stronghold and that's exactly what we're going to do we got primo secundos and tertius with us clay factor and a dagger i would like to get magister as our main frontline uh, with us and last but not least two psionically active soldiers and uh, I think we're going to go with Roby and shall we say Wells Renvan. Yes, please. Very good. Renvan takes another another mimic beacon. We got blue screen rounds on Roby. Pretty decent gun. What are we giving Renvin? Renvin has a standard plasma rifle. That is not okay. We're instead going to go with that advanced stock. He also got a shredder gun, so that will be just fine. We got a lot of explosives, just like the last time. And we're going to jump right into the action. I am not scared of uh, the Chosen, quite the contrary. Uh, this is hopefully going to be an execution. Let's see what we can do. Very good. And guess okay, who people. has Stay just alert. landed? Damn right, it's us. That thing dies today, no matter what it takes. Detecting a strong energy signature further ahead in the facility. There is no doubt in my mind that it is from the Chosen. And that's where we need to be. Take pride, XCOM. Pride that you will come further than any of your kind. Pride that your death this day honors the Elder. Very good. So, we're going to... I notice we're not fighting against the Hunter. We're fighting against the Assassin. See? That's what you get when you are not paying attention uh, for two months uh, to your campaign. Well, that's going to be even more interesting. Uh, she is uh, certainly a force to be reckoned with, but here's the cool part. Since we do have three mechs, uh, guess what's going to happen with the sarcophagus as uh, soon as we kill her? Damn right, it's going to be overdrive, 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 and the sarcophagus will go insanely quick uh, from 50 hit points to zero. Good. Let's uh, take a good look at what we're going to do. Good, so let's take a look. We got uh, the clear direction here to the north. This uh, wall here is closed, although you could theoretically probably um, use a rocket to open it and take a shortcut, but we are going to take the prudent uh, thing, which is mostly not doing uh, not using any of our consumables as always we're going to go for the good old fire line uh, the mechs are going to stand very much on the front and both of the psi uh, operatives are taking full cover Good. Overwatch, Overwatch, and let's take a look what is gonna happen. We can hear no such thing as a movement. So if there is a pack in here, they are already in here. Take particular notice to your surroundings. This here is an openable door. So. Since it's already open, what could have happened is it uh, could have spawned open, but uh, technically if you're seeing open doors, that's always a good indicator that uh, someone might have walked through it. So opening our door ourselves reveals exactly nothing. We're therefore going to take the max. Secundus here as our primary yeah, tank in the front 
is going to do exactly that. We're going to play some clean XCOM by moving everyone in. What's over there? If, if you say so. Good. And Magister, I would like to put into a full cover position right behind Glaive. Good. Full Overwatch. Still haven't heard anything. Theoretically, they could come from uh, the right-hand side, and that's fine. But it's unlikely that that's going to happen. Good. We can already see that this here is a longer tunnel. The uh, fact that we're going to uh, that we're seeing a blocked position here indicates that there might be either crates that uh, can spawn uh, there sometimes, but oftentimes it's also just a tower. So. This here is an infamous kind of building block uh, where very often you're going to see like towers. This here seems to be a dead end. So I would say let's make our way Advancing. towards the left. Oh, well, look at that. To sneak in here today. Let's take these things out. All right, What's moving up. There? Good old Void Rift would deal at least some damage. We also theoretically got Soul Fire for a single uh, damage attack, which is fine. Let's further move so. up here. And would we get more than one yeah that six to nine points of damage is pretty convincing let's start with it still trying to deal the damage with our max so that they can be leveled up and uh, let's keep in mind the target is to let them kill and use as little consumables as possible. All right, so they're taking a good beating. This is now theoretically a mind control. Yep, but mind control resisted. Another one took some, oh no, I figured it might be some extra damage. These here are the rider effects um, that can trigger. Two of them are panicked. And this here should kill, th uh, kill two of them. There we go. Perfect. Nicely done. Double kill. Full focus. And we're just going to go into parry mode. Starting to soften up the chrysalids because they will go for our uh, for our temper, and we do have blade storm, so that's perfectly fine. Let them come. Well, and that's the beauty of having a front line that can that can dish out a lot of damage. I had counseled the elders to show patience with your race, yet here you now stand. This here looks like the final room. That's exactly where we want to go. So we're going there and then over through here. This here does not look like we're having an entrance. No, no, no. It, definitely looks like the entrance is over here so just by seeing those little tiles and knowing it very well you can already assess where you need to go there, this door is closed meaning as long as we don't do anything we can pretty much freely move Proceeding to target. 
All right, good. Okay, I'll go. So, we're preparing to breach the next door. I'm okay with going a bit slower. We want to regain our uh, cooldowns, specifically the ones uh, from the Psy Operative Snow Lens. Takes a bit to, uh, to recharge. It's a pretty strong skill, so... Good, we're taking... Usually I wouldn't breach like that, but since we can't really take any uh, cover, this is actually not such a bad idea. Good, we hear that there is a pack at the final room. That's not surprising. Would it be so hard to trust the elders? To believe for an instant that they fight for more than just a single world? All right, so we're opening the door and we are not seeing anyone. But we see, uh, see, that's yet another in indication here that you should take serious, uh, seriously. This door here has been breached. And the way that it has been breached is someone has moved through the wall. The only uh, enemies that can do it are Andromedons or Sectopods. Sectopods usually don't spawn here, which tells us in the next room here, there is an Andromedon. So in order to kind of smoothly approach just that, a just taking a careful approach. I don't want to rush in. Good, and we can see into that room without uh, being spotted out. Taking that full cover again, and Magister is also in full cover. No one will Scanning for targets. Optical sensors Scanning on Overwatch. On Overwatch. Engaging Overwatch. Good, let's take a look. I'm pretty sure we're going to hear that there's another pack just around uh, the corner. Apparently that's not the case. Moving in uh, to trigger the pack. What a surprise, right? Not really. Not really. We already knew that that was happening. Okay. All right. Let's uh, move over here. 94%. Uh, it's 60%. Uh, hmm. I like the idea of uh, that 70% shield bearer. We might trigger another pack, but I don't mind that idea. Can deal with two packs. Okie dokie, good. So, let's move in. This is going to be our uh, theoretical mimic beacon if needed. And look at that, we could take high ground over here. I think that that could be a fantastic idea, hopefully. Yeah, maybe it's not such a good idea because the preview monitor doesn't really show anything that we could hit. So instead, let's just move in. We're taking cooldowns that are replenishable. And let's 
start with the obvious targets. That's one. That's two. That also did destroy his cover. P fantastic, that is a nice side effect. All right, so. Moving to here. Let's move to somewhere where we can kind of spread out just a tiny bit. On the move. Good. We're still not trying to use any major cooldown items. Consumables, rather. And let's start with the Andromedon. Nice little hit, even a crit. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so if we were to bombard, we could only hit one target and that would also be effectively a consumable. So I don't want to do that. Instead, overdrive to finish this guy. There we go. Uh, can't really, can't really ensure that this guy is going to die. However, what we could do is um, this here could be a hit. And consequently, the Bladestorm afterwards could kill him. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's move in. Wow, nice. Fantastic. Good. Parrying. We still got a shot left. And we can theoretically try to dominate and or stasis. Hmm. Let's think about that. Domination is only a 60% chance, stasis is a 100% chance. So I think we're just going with stasis. Uh, it doesn't cost us anything. The three here will um, start to move in and just stun Lance. We do have uh, Perry here in case uh, he's going to be attacked. So I think that that would be fine. Uh, I wouldn't want to go in too deep. The other option is we could um, use stasis here, or I could be less stingy and just put a mimic beacon down, really. But this guy here is kind of our living mimic beacon. So let's go for stasis. That also means mind control and stasis from his side are not a thing. And the rest is less threatening, shall I say. Okay, we could deal with either of these guys or we're just taking a shot at the Andromedon, to be honest. There's the Bladestorm I was talking about. He's already dead, or he was already dead. Good, and now my prediction is these guys will come in. No, nope. my prediction was awfully wrong. See, it surprises you even after such a long time. I was too stingy and now kind of paid the price for that. It's not the end of the world, but those little mistakes Can always try to improve. Lancer has got a lance and should have known. Pretty nice hit, by the way. Right 
All right, uh, let's try the energy shield just to give every single one of our fellows a good old energy shield. Well, hello there. And let me think, did we had an option to regain hit points? Yeah, the insanity can leech hit points, theoretically. I'm not sure if we skilled it on Renmin, like I said. Uh, it's probably one of the things if you do not have two months of uh, time in between, you are better off to judge that. I still want to try to heal some hit points here, so might as well just go around the corner. Mostly to get out of the way of the others. It seems that I have not skilled uh, the life drain, and that's fine, it can happen. I don't want to use teamwork. Uh, Soulfire was uh, the one that is def uh, would definitely drain uh, some life. We're instead going to move back. Unfortunately, repair only really works on Max. What we can do though is we can shred him. He's now also very much uh, disoriented. So. Gonna move up, 100% hit and kill. That's it. Doesn't lead to a promotion, but still leads to a solid outcome. And uh, let's see how we want to deal with those clowns here. We could move all the way over here. Probably not the worst idea. Yep, that's our target. This appears to be an alien transport device of some kind. Understood. Looks like we found our way out of here. Elite Shield Bearer and that guy is the one that we actually want to hit. Very nice. Ten points of damage, that would be a kill, I like it. Unfortunately we can only hit one. Well, we can hit multiples, uh, like that. There's the kill, and we even dealt some extra damage. Shield is overall removed. We could now move all the way to here to create like a situation where both of them would be Bladestorm attack. Good. We're reloading using the option to do that and softening up the enemy. We got five extra hit points, plenty of um, opportunity to deal with those two clowns. And I, I move into here, we would expose ourselves quite a bit. Uh, reflection would be an option. Alternatively, we could just go into full cover or in full cover here. Let's just go for full cover. No need to take any chances. I already made one little mistake and that was costly. Costed us some hit points. 
Not necessary to do another one. I still want to prevent almost using any of the consumables. Well, so much for the shield, right? Right. It is not our will that you suffer. Humanity's sacrifice will be great, but so too shall be its reward. Submit to me now, XCOM. Ensure the future of your people. Good, quick kill. This guy's down. And now what I would like to do is kill the freeze back there. Moving in. He's in full cover, so it stinks a bit. But 50-50 is still okay for now. Specifically if you do have stocks. And then, of course, there is soul fire and all of the good stuff that you can do, which completely ignores cover. There we go. So, the elite priest is down to what? Two, four, six, eight, ten. That is level. And we're definitely going to use the opportunity. Of course, sustenance saves him. But we're going to parry, which means this guy is going to... Uh, he would theoretically ignore us by uh, waking up and instead of moving, uh, he could um, he could stasis Hawkbite or Magister. That's a risk that I'm willing to take. This guy here, on the other hand, pretty annoying situation. Like I said, we could use any form of grenade uh, or cover removal. Not going to do that mainly because if he hits one of the mechs, repairing them is uh, definitely an option. And it's probably more effective because we have more repair um, cooldowns uh, than we would have uh, than we would have um, damage cooldowns. So I'm still normally you would. Normally you would definitely uh, go for some sort of cover removal um, or mimic beacon if you would want to absolutely minimize uh, the damage. But that's not what we're uh, trying to do. What we're trying to do is minimize the items that we use. Good, moving up. And we're now in a really solid position. Wait, we don't have a... Nah, we can't quick load. Oh, that's... That is unfortunate. I was trying to hand this kill here to a mech. Fortunately, that does not seem to work. Oh, look at that. Undying loyalty at its finest. Perfect. Uh, we have eliminated all of uh, them. Uh, let's just kill this guy here real quick. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to go and face um, the assassin. Got it. Moving. Wonderful. Everybody on board. Shoo shoo. We're going to leave the train station. Next stop, Assassin Town. The one thing that is annoying is we took some damage on one of the Psyops. I wanted to do it as a flawless mission. So my honor as a good player feels a bit betrayed. I failed with a flawless mission. So shall we 
just heal any of the mechs. Probably not necessary at this point. Uh, just checking the cooldowns. Everything's back up. Wonderful. And that means we are going to move. We're going to move and uh, fight the Chosen next. So activation of the Ascension Gate and we're confirming it well is time to go. See Let's see what side. the Chosen really has to offer. Now, and people, guess what? We're in the careful. belly of the beast. And this is going to be Assassin Town. What is that? Some kind of stasis chamber for the Chosen? No wonder they keep coming back at us despite everything we throw at them. So, time for the Assassin. By the way, all of the three, if you have noticed, all of the Even three now, um, sort of gone. battlegrounds are a bit different. The one with the Assassin, I always appreciate that, um, has no high ground whatsoever, which is fantastic. Hunter procs, so we're taking a couple of extra shots. Not only a couple, quite a few actually. <laughs> Look at that, cool. Good. We're going to try to dominate because I want another body on the uh, dance floor. There we go. Look at that. Who would have thought? And you probably wouldn't have guessed, but good old blue screen rounds make short process before you get too close just a moment the rest of it is really clean up we're moving in without moving too far servos engaged my understanding we can move all the way up to here but we're going to do that next turn This here should still be okay without triggering. Superior scope is a fantastic loot, by the way. Affirmative. I'm on my way. All right. Moving, and uh, let us. What's over there? Try to reload whenever possible because there is no enemy right here. Elite Lancer is just going to overwatch. Rearming weapon systems. Reload in progress. Ever vigilant. Okay, perfect. Good. 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 Very good. All right. Here we go. I will comply. So our goal is to kill her as soon as possible and then the sarcophagus right. on top of it. We've faced these things before and we can do it again. No matter what happens today, only one side is leaving this place alive. Agreed. Time for an overdrive, shall we? Yes, we shall. Good. Less cover for the Chosen means more fun for us. I would have guessed she was uh, there. I clearly guessed incorrect. And there we go. Well, sometimes it is the small detail. Not sure if we can remove that cover, but we're going to find out in a second. If anything can remove the cover, it's the Ball of Doom. No, it's non removable cover. Position as soon as it took damage. 
Well, who would have guessed that that could be a thing, right? Nah, we don't want to rage strike him yet. What I would really like to do is get a good read on that chosen and shred her. Shall we use overdrive? We probably shall not. But we do no longer need to withhold our explosives. That's exactly what they're here for. Nice little shredding. Well, look at that, right? Good. How about... How about... Hmm. I want to be as close as possible so that next round we can really deal with the sarcophagus and deal as much as uh, as much damage as possible i suppose this here will not hurt though because we're almost at the sarcophagus and i really like the ability to hit her from a flanking shot nice little critical hit 14 points of damage that was well worth it We're moving to here and that is normally in range of the sarcophagus and it's barely in range of the null lands. There we go, that's another planeswalker. Just out of curiosity... Let's move up. We can always move closer to the sarcophagus. Or not. Maybe we're just really, really, really starting to hurt her. The elders will not forgive you. Okay, I'll go. Eight points of damage. Four to six, not enough. Eight points definitely is enough. Let's see if we can kill her. Well, I should be more careful with my assessments of what definitely is enough and what isn't. Just moving in the open to offer us as a sacrificial lamb. That's an easy kill. And that again just shows how fantastic uh, the Hunter Overwatch is. If she moves up and... Yeah, well that was stupid. Should have told you that was a bad idea. She has had the chance between instant death and just taking the sacrificial lamb. She decided to go for instant death, which, yeah, whatever. So a choice. Doctor, the device appears to be some sort of psionic capacitor, transferring tremendous amounts of psionic energy directly to the chosen, restoring them. No wonder these things don't die. Good. Now let's take a look at the quality of our mechs i already mentioned that they are just absolutely fantastic in dealing with lots of hit points and here is the innate proof overdrive three hits and the pylon is almost halfway down 
Look at that, this was just one mech. On the move. Moving up, overdrive. And one, and two. The Templar is unfortunately pretty bad in dealing with any form of pylon removal. It's one of his few weaknesses, but he can deal with both of them. They are effectively dead. One of them, as you can see, has already died. The other one will die uh, by the hand of the Templar. On the move. Blade Storm will finish it. We don't have any overdrive, so I could freely move. Instead, we're going to continue our Wild Rampage. Good. So how about... We're also hitting with our mind controlled unit. That's good. This here is not so much to kill him, but really just to move closer to the pylon. Because we can now optimize the damage, it's, it's and here is how. We're moving up, we're taking a shot at the pylon. Since we are in range with him, we can also teamwork. He has two... Uh, still two actions left over. We team worked. Then we're taking a shot. And that extra shot really made the difference. In one round, we went from 100 to 0. Yes. Only thing that's left over. Has been interrupted. Readings on the capacitor indicate it has become highly unstable. Since we killed. Yeah, since we killed it right away. Okay, so we're saving our rocket, to be honest. Moving up, just to see where the Chosen could be. Since we killed it so fast, uh, one of the things that happens is she will only regenerate to a third. Kill it in the round right after, she will regenerate on to a third. If you kill it in the round when she actually summons two additional creatures, she will regenerate to 66%. So since we killed it so fast, she did not even have time to regenerate. Movement request confirmed. Moving over. And this might be the end of her. Told you, it's going to be a stomp once we got a, a foothold on her. She is not standing any chance. That feels so, so satisfying because remember how often she better. ambushed us and now it was payback time. So, once again, super good performance of uh, the uh, Sparks. Double over overdrive just to kill her. And with the exception of that one lapse of judgment, which I should really have been too stingy, could have simply thrown the Mimic Beacon in there and just called it a day. That's why you have the Mimic Beacons. But other than that, it was a good mission. All right, and we are back. It is uh, the debrief. Uh, the assault uh, on the Chosen Stronghold was successful, quite frankly. The mechs have done a fantastic job and you can always redeploy them. 
The only problem that we had was uh, Renman got shafted once and that was uh, due to a lapse of judgment. But we have gone through that already. Got the Assassin's Arashi, which is a nice shotgun. No one can use it. That is unfortunate. There are mods uh, that will allow every class to basically use every category of weapon, but since we're playing without mods, uh, that's not going to work for us. Also, the Assassin's Katana is a fantastic weapon. Unfortunately, both of them are ranger weapons, so nothing that we can use. Spear Scope, uh, that is certainly something that we can use. Fantastic plus 15 aim and a couple of faces corpses for potentially another Mimic Beacon. Good, and that concludes our first chosen who went down. Oh wow, a lot of fear of the chosen. I suppose that's just a delayed message and wasn't happening due to us killing the chosen. But here's uh, the deal, we defeated her, which is fantastic. So that is awesome. Probably want to kill him next, so we wanted to do that. And uh, yeah, speaking about which, I th I can't remember why I left that open. I think I wanted to do it just so that we could infiltrate the stronghold. And then I believe we wanted to either reduce avatar progress. That could have been a decent idea let's see we do have three open facilities so no we did not want to reduce the avatar pro uh, process we can either go for the hunter that's fantastic nine dodge i love it but we're not playing long enough to um take take full advantage of it resistance context plus one is also good but we're probably going to simply go with this and who will we put onto the mission? Hogbite is with negative trade recovery, that's fine. We don't want a soldier to be captured. Can't use any of uh, these guys, so our problem was that we couldn't use an additional soldier. Psyops are either wounded or tired. Apparently can't put them onto the mission. And we need a lieutenant at least, so damn. Soldier capture, chance is low, but I don't want to lose uh, the Templar. Got the same problem here, which means we're probably back to reducing avatar progress, to be honest. And the only way that we can do that is with her. 25 supplies, more than fine, and we're putting another rookie, Raul, onto the mission. Got an ambush, that's okay, but Irina here should be fine. We're getting a plus one health as a free gift out of it. The infirmary and Hogbite will continue staying busy removing the negative traits, so I remember quite clearly that we wanted to do that, just to free, free Hogbite from all of the unnecessary um, negative traits. We got three facilities available for us, so that's okay. And I believe we wanted to heal faster. Setting course for the East African sector. Yeah, we didn't need the supplies. That's fine. Ellie and Alois up here are okay. You know what? The crystals... Nah, don't really need that either. Could make contact any time. Inside knowledge, all ma weapon modifications are increased. We got integrated warfare, the PCSs are already increased. And I think the only thing here was, yeah, greater resolve. I think we wanted to get that as well. So how about we're building a network tower here? That way we can also gain the whole continent bonus. 
weapon upgrades. Um, that's just a free static boost to all of uh, the weapon upgrades, which makes this sense. This proved to have been an important breakthrough. And that is fantastic. We got another upgrade slot. Perfect. Our breakthrough is uh, giving us plus one. Uh, hit points on heavy armor. That's great. Uh, the gatekeeper autopsy is. I like the idea of the assassin weapons, but they don't really give us any benefits, so we don't need the inspired. The inspired will give us a faster research, and if we would be completely trying to optimize it, this here could lead to another research breakthrough. So we might want to uh, use it. On the other hand, Gatekeeper would give us access to the highest Psi amplifier. And I think that that this is specific. advantageous, so we're instead going to take it. We don't really need the chosen weapons. That's more to trigger a breakthrough uh, than anything else. And like I mentioned, that's probably not so important. Got yet another... Um, facility, so we're back to five facilities. That's okay, I suppose. They were no pushovers, my siblings. Blast launcher, that's so another good weapon. Dangerous after all. Good, we got ourselves another bond. Two rookies finally made a bond level two. How about we're finding another uh, set of rookies nope nothing magister here nope can't train anything fortunately we can't train the psyops in the training chamber that is that would make them probably even more op than they anyways are if you're already the stro uh, strongest class in the game, you don't need to train even further. So yeah, can't really train anyone here. But it seems that the it seems okay. Thanks, guys. Um, it seems that the negative traits were actually not delayed, but were coming through because we do have Magister here being shaken. And I don't know why we received such low will. Uh, maybe, maybe the assassin had uh, an ability to reduce will, but it almost looks like he received negative abilities. Let's just double check. I know that Magister didn't have negative ones beforehand, and he still does not. Okay, I was wrong. Um, just double checking if if uh, the four negative traits were recent or not. Good, let's finish our radio supply. Another 100 income, we can see it's already 500. Making contact uh, for only 80 intel, uh, that's fantastic. Now, effect of all weapon modifications is increased. That is glorious. That's really good. And we could theoretically also go with the next uh, powerful alien. Uh, if my memory serves me well, I think it was the Archon that was still missing. So here we could get the Icarus suit. To be honest, totally honest, I don't know if we have finally killed uh, the the um, the Snake King. I don't think we did. Good. Back to healing. Let's heal faster. And we got a couple of new targets, guys. So, squad size limited to three. Surgical. Interesting. Um, the faceless hidden on the missions are not really a negative. They might be a positive. We got another engineer for hacking the station. And we got ourselves 85 intel. Loyalty among thieves. So this here is a hidden event, which is pretty negative. Loyalty among thieves is not so negative. It's interesting. This here is 
uh, there are a lot of losts in here and we got an alien infiltrator here so that one that d dark event really doesn't scare me too much uh, we do not have a problem with that either so we're probably going to go for uh, countering the hidden event although we don't really need an engineer anymore doesn't matter i don't want any bad surprises keep in mind we're playing with permanent dark events so we got to be really a bit careful the other thing that i noticed is we could use another uh, contact and i know for sure that one of the covert ops missions gave us an additional plus one uh, regional contact so we're going to do that next yeah and other than that it seems to progress just well what we want to get out of the next mission hopefully is that our soldiers will recover just well the negative trade recovery for Hawkbite is almost done we hopefully get Magister back in action soon-ish once uh, that's done we can put maybe him and um, no maybe Storm and Hawkbite together onto onto a covert ops mission Storm's almost done with the current covert ops mission negative trades done in two days as well so both of them will be available and that could help us to finally get closer to the warlock which is our next big target in this run yeah and that's pretty much it guys i received the feedback in the comments that you guys want me to just spend more time on the strategy layer that's really not that much i can say other than we have pretty good rookie team um the sparks are coming in nicely uh, both of these paladins are soon going to be champions as well so we've almost maxed out the uh, the spark level up and other than that we're just training the psionic characters as uh, things are currently going I would probably go with three sparks, two psionic, uh, uh, two psi operatives, and one templar. But I might change my mind. The, the double templar strategy is also very viable. Anyways, take care, guys. And as always, if you like what you're seeing, feel free to leave a comment down below. That helps the channel. Smash that like button and see you in the next run. Bye bye.